Here we have a spicy pillow. This is a Dell XPS that I picked up for only £20 off eBay with some explosive character. Let's tear this box open to see if we can rectify this issue and create the perfect laptop. I've done some stupid things in my time but buying a clearly inflated battery from eBay might be up there. Still, the fact it came intact is nothing short of a miracle. Anyways, here we have the Dell XPS 9550 which released way back in 2016. The seller didn't mention its specs or if it even worked so I was essentially going in blind. Presumably, I believe it to have an i5 6th gen and an Nvidia 960M graphics. The XPS line have always piqued my interest so I just had to give it a go. And the fact that it only cost £20 was a no-brainer even if it didn't work and spontaneously erupted in my face. Condition was pretty shocking, with the obvious chassis deformation due to an inflated battery and also a sticky palm rest, it has definitely seen better days. As these cost upwards in the thousands back in 2016, it's a shame how decrepit it looks. With that said, we'll definitely try to revive this little beast no matter what. Let's take a closer look. Anyways, here we have the rather precarious laptop with a really big battery bulge. I mean, would you look at that? I mean, I've never seen a bulge that big. Anyways, let's take a look and see what this Dell XPS 9550, I'm pretty sure, is all about. So let's just open the lid and see what we're dealing with. Okay, so the palm rest is literally melting. I mean, that is a really sticky palm rest and I don't really want to touch that anymore. And yeah, we do not want to mess around with that. Honestly, I don't even want to turn this on, so we're probably going to go straight into a disassembly and take that thing right out. I guess the keyboard is in good shape. I mean, all of the components are literally popping out of the chassis, which you do not want to see. But other than that, I guess the, the metal lid on the top and bottom are in good shape. But yeah, let's just disassemble this thing and take out that battery because, you know what, I do not want to mess around with that. So yeah. Let's do that. All right, here we have the Dell XPS. Let's just start by unscrewing all of these screws. Now, these screws are the pencil up type, which I'm not fond with because they are quite prone to stripping. So let's just try and be really careful with all of these screws. And I have noticed that one of the screws are missing. So I'm pretty sure they did try and disassemble this before quite unsuccessfully because they did not take out the battery. And one thing I did find out is these Dell XPS's had quite an issue with these batteries just bulging out and exploding out of nowhere. So honestly, it's good that it's landed here at the right moment because who knows if it would have ignited in transit, you know? Literally anything is possible. But yeah, with all of that said, let's just start disassembling this thing and take out the bottom panel. Okay, we should be nearly done. And with the help of the battery, the bottom panel is kind of just popping out by its own. So yeah, we should be fine now. Let's see if this bottom panel comes off. And yes, it does. Ooh, that is quite hefty. But yeah, there you have it. That's what the internals look like. And as you can see, that battery is about to burst. <laughs> okay, that is quite ridiculous. And one thing I've noticed is that there's a one terabyte SSD. Is that an SSD? No, that's a hard drive and an SSD in it. A 32 gigabyte SSD. That's quite cool. And they also left the two sticks of RAM. Wow. Okay, who knows? We might find some pictures in these hard drives. Anyway, so we have a 56 watt hour battery and literally both of those cells are about to burst. Now, I do not want to mess with that. So we need to take that out straight away. So yeah, let's take out this battery real quickly and mess around with the other components and clean out these heat sinks. And hopefully we should be able to get this thing up and running. I just had to put into perspective how ridiculous this battery was. You could actually smell the fumes emitting from it, which wasn't ideal to say the least. At least all the other components look largely unscathed, so I feel like we can definitely fix this up. Taking out the RAM, it looks like we have 2 by 4 gb sticks of DDR4. The M.2 SSD is a SATA SK Hynix variant. Its tiny size was probably used for caching, as we also have a mighty 1TB WD hard drive. And of course, the main attraction. The soon-to-be combusting battery was safely taken out. To be honest, I have have no clue what to do with it. Looks quite exceptional once out of the laptop. Next, we have to clean out the fans and heatsink as I suspect the thermal paste has never seen a replacement. And as I was doing that, my suspicions came to light. We indeed have a GPU of some sorts in this machine. That's quite promising. After a quick pace change, we were up and ready. Well, actually not since Dell's incredible engineering continued to amaze me. After lifting the lid of the laptop, the hinge came out with it. Looks like it was held with some glue. Anyways, I bought the best thing Amazon had to offer and decided to semi-repair the issue. I doubt it would hold up, but for now, it's fine. With all of that completed, let's see if my hard work paid off. 
Alright, here we have the Dell XPS, which is absolutely filthy. Like, you do not want to touch this whatsoever. So we'll give that a quick clean, but before we do, let's just see if it has any signs of life. So let's just plug it into power and see if it boots up. Okay, there you have it. And let's just turn on the power button. Okay. Oh, okay, this. There you have it. Okay, so there's a Dell splash screen. Would you look at that? Let's go into the BIOS. Okay, yeah, that's a good sign. And I can't believe that it actually turned on, especially with that inflated battery. Okay, what is this? Invalid configuration information, time of day not set. Okay, so I suppose the CMOS battery is absolutely dead. Okay, alert, you have attached an undersized 60 watt power adapter to your system. Yeah, I mean, I'm using a 65 watt power adapter right now. So we'll obviously change that to 130 so we get the most amount of performance that we can. But other than that, let's just go into the BIOS setup. Would you have it? Look at that. So the manufactured date is the 25th of February 2016. And the ownership date is the 12th of June 2016. So this is around, I mean, literally just about nine years old. That is kind of crazy. And especially looking at this right now, it does not look like it's from 2016. Let me tell you that. It looks like it's from like 2019, 2020 because of the thin bezels. I mean, to have one of these back in 2016, 2017 would be quite incredible. Let me tell you that. So we're currently working with an i5 6300 HQ CPU at 2.3 gigahertz and that has four cores and I presume six or eight threads. It would be eight threads, wouldn't it? Okay, Skylake graphics, that's good to see. 64 megabytes of video memory, 15.6 inch FHD display at 1920 by 1080p. Okay, so we can confirm that XPS does in fact work after all of the things it's went through. What we'll do now is turn the thing around and give it a new battery. So I did have to wait a week for this. So we do have a brand new 97 watt hour battery, which will be very good for this kind of laptop. So let's just leave that aside. And of course, we're not gonna be using a hard drive. So we also have a 256 gigabyte SSD. So we'll put all of these components in and also clean the hell out of this laptop because the palm rest at the minute is literally melting. Like it is not nice to feel whatsoever. It is kind of sticky and gunky. So we need to fix that with some isopropyl alcohol. Before that, let's give it a little disassembly and put those components in. Hopefully this laptop should be functional as it was back in 2016. So let's do that real quick. Well, I guess we're back to disassembling. Skipping forward to the SSD, let's take out that morsel and replace it with a sufficient 256GB NVMe drive. Here we have the new 84 watt hour OEM battery which will be a great addition to this laptop. Best part is, it only cost me around £25 which is a steal. And also more than the actual laptop but we don't think about that. Taking out the aging hard drive and replacing it with a bigger battery will be beneficial. Especially so given the hardware we're working with. Now that's worthy of a round of B-roll. Let's turn our focus to the aesthetics which is quite depressing and frankly disgusting. Nothing a bit of isopropyl alcohol can't fix. After a few minutes of scrubbing the sticky rubber coating quickly ceased to exist and what survived is a little ball of sadness. Of course I cleaned the screen and chassis and the transformation is quite apparent. Looks and feels a whole lot better. Time to install an OS and what's better than a bit of Ubuntu. Since Windows 10 will sadly fade into history, the adoption of Linux only makes sense. It only took a couple of minutes and we're finally into something usable. Finally, let's explore the £20 Dell XPS, the once miserable laptop, into something potentially usable. Here we finally have the Dell XPS up and running with Ubuntu. Now you guys can stop telling me to use Linux because you probably think I have some vendetta against it, but I don't. I genuinely believe Ubuntu on this kind of machine is perfect, especially since the 6th gen Intel CPUs are going to expire soon as Windows 10 will soon depart. But here we have Ubuntu on the Dell XPS 9550 and honestly it's kind of perfect. The trackpad works, the keyboard works, all the drivers works, the Nvidia drivers works. The screen is really nice, we need to talk about that but we'll explore that later on. Overall the complete package is quite sound but we'll delve into it deeper so let's just explore what this Dell XPS has to offer in 2025. First things first, let's go take a look at the specifications. So let's just go into settings. So currently we're working with an i5 6300HQ with four cores and eight threads. We do have eight gigabytes of memory, which was pre-installed. And for the graphics, we have an NVIDIA GeForce GTX 960M, which for the time was actually pretty decent. So you can technically play some games on this, which we will test later on. So let's just go back and see what the battery is saying. So we did install a brand new battery, which cost around 20, 25 pounds, I think, somewhere around that, which honestly isn't too bad considering it is OEM. 
we didn't have to, you know, opt for a non-genuine part, which would have been catastrophic considering the battery that was previously in this. So currently we're sitting at 79% and according to Ubuntu, we have nine hours and 15 minutes remaining, which is quite exceptional. I mean, I don't think it will be that high, but considering Ubuntu is quite low power, it could well be. I mean, it's a lot better than Windows, I will tell you that. But yeah, let's see what the Dell XPS really is like just using it in 2025, like web browsing, watching videos, and see how good those speakers are because we do need to test those. So let's take a look, shall we? So here we have Firefox and let's just see how fast the Dell XPS runs. And let's just type in the Dell XPS model number, 9550. There you go. And honestly, it is quite snappy, I have to say. Honestly, you can probably use this in 2025 easily and probably for years to come, especially with the new battery that we put in here. If you do manage to find one of these at a really good price, then definitely opt for a new battery because it just changes the whole experience. As for a simple typing test, let's see how I do. So yeah, not bad whatsoever. Genuinely speaking, the keyboard is actually pretty good. There is enough depth of travel and it is quite clicky at times, but I will say that over time, the keys do feel kind of mushy when kind of typing and kind of just spacing around, but that is what you expect with a keyboard that is nine years old. So I'll give it the benefit of the doubt, but genuinely a really good keyboard and I wouldn't mind typing anything on this really. As for the screen, honestly, you really can't go wrong with it. Like it has a 1080p display, 60 hertz, and it is IPS, which it is quite, what the hell? So yeah, as I was saying, the screen is not bad whatsoever. And I honestly wouldn't mind watching a film or any kind of movie on this. And for the price I paid for, you really can't go wrong. I mean, 20 pounds, what can you really buy for 20 pounds really? The fact that it was supposedly broken when I bought it and the fact that it actually works now is kind of incredible and there's no artifacts or anything I can see on the screen, which is perfect. So yeah, thumbs up for the screen and let's see how those speakers sound. speakers are pretty good there's enough clarity and bass in them and i'm gonna hear any cracking or distortions so yeah speakers are definitely not bad whatsoever as for a little cpu stress test let's see how well the i5 in this xps performs in geekbench 6. the results are finally in and as for the single core score we got 991 and for the multi-core score amiga 1651 I mean, that ain't too good, I must be honest. I mean, we are working with, let me just go down here, an i5-6300HQ CPU with four cores and eight threads, hyper-threading. In theory, we should be able to get around the mid-2000s. As for the CPU benchmark tables on Geekbench's website, we should be able to get a single core score of 1025 and a multi-core score of around 2773. So that is quite a bit lower than what we actually got. I'm not sure why that's the case, probably due to an underclocked CPU in the Dell XPS, but the fact that the Dell XPS didn't crash whatsoever means that it's a pass in my box, albeit a bit on the lower end of things. As mentioned before, the Dell XPS does have dedicated 960M graphics, so let's see how well they fare in Valley Benchmark. So we're running on custom preset at the system resolution, and let's see how well we do. Well, I wouldn't want to do anything intensive on this indeed. I mean, we only got an average FPS of 11.8 and a score of 495. I'm not sure why that is the case. And if you guys can let me know in the comments if that is true to cause, because obviously this is a really thin chassis. You wouldn't really expect a full fat 960M in one of these. So perhaps it's undervolted and that's probably why we're getting a really low score. But other than that, I guess it didn't crash. I wanted to test at least one game in this video, so here we have Minecraft Java 1.21 running on the Dell XPS. And at the minute we're currently getting around 90 FPS, which isn't too bad. The Dell XPS does sound like a flipping jet engine, so bear in mind. But other than that, we're getting a pretty stable FPS, not too many dips here and there. And if we just go into the water, we will see a few dips, 117 FPS, 141. I guess going in the ocean does increase the FPS somewhat. And for some reason, on the top right corner, it does say the CPU is unknown, but we do have an i5-6300HQ. But yeah, we're getting around 86, 94. If you're worrying about the settings, we're on 12 chunks and everything. VSync is off, max frame rate unlimited. And as for the quality, we're on fancy graphics, fancy clouds, default weather, all particles as you'd expect essentially, so yeah, the game does run quite well. I mean, I have seen much better on other laptops at a similar specification, so this result does somewhat disappoint me, but the fact that we're getting above 60 FPS stable is not bad whatsoever, so let me know what you think down in the comments. 
So there we have it. What do you think about the Dell XPS 9550? The fact that we only paid only £20 for the actual laptop, it is not a bad package whatsoever. I mean, it is definitely usable and I can see myself using this for another two to three years. So yeah, let me know what you think down in the comments. If you did enjoy this video, remember to like, subscribe and also share the video and do turn on those notifications so you don't miss another video in the future. That's it from me. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.